So D-Day for the GDPR is this May, May 25 to be exact. And a lot of companies, a lot of lawyers have written to us saying, is it too late? Well, it's not too late, and it's a long-term process, actually. But we had a chance to talk to a company called Veronis, who's behind me, here at InfoSecurity BE, Belgium, which is focused this year almost completely on GDPR. And the folks from Veronis put the whole thing in perspective. And here's that interview. The Monster's Coming, GDPR. Uh, off camera, we talked about it a little bit. So can you kind of summarize what we're, what we're facing here? Yeah, indeed. 27th of May, we will, uh, we will have to be ready for GDPR. So what's coming is, um, yeah, we need to protect our data. We need to know where do we have GDPR-related data, what are the processes related to GDPR, how are we going to treat it. Data leakages are getting more and more popular, but GDPR is getting closer and closer. So how will we deal with it? It will really be a big challenge to, to be ready for each company to have a full GDPR uh, project. You're a large company. You've given this a lot of thought. How do you guys approach this? What do you tell your clients? Good question. So how we do it is that we're going to help our customers to have a proper visibility on GDPR. We have three main questions like where do we store our GDPR, uh, GDPR related uh, data? How many do we have? Who has access to it? What is happening with it? And last but not least, is there any anomaly? Is there any user behavior happening with it that can bring us to a data leakage? We will prevent that le data leakages happen. Every step that will lead to a data leakage will be stopped and will be triggered by Veronis. So let's get specific then. Tell me how you guys tackle a GDPR project. So how to start a GDPR project is first, you need to do a full mapping of your environment. As I said, how many GDPR related data do we have? Who has access to it? What is happening with it? These are three main questions. But if we can answer them, we can start doing a GDPR project. First things first, we need to prioritize. If I have lots of classified GDPR related data open to a lot of people, well, we need to get rid of. We need to secure that specific uh, data. Second thing is that we need to involve the business. We need to identify data owners, who is a potential data owner and how can we involve them. So we will send them reports that the business can understand who has access to their data. Third topic is that we will automate it. So we will send automatic reporting to the business that they can certify these people have access to my data. So we change the way of working from IT to business and the business will need to certify it. They will need to take their responsibility and accountability. So let's do this in pieces. So what role, what responsibility do the technical people have? So technical people need to make sure that the data is well protected. So they will have a lot of information, a lot of visibility. They will have to start doing something with it. So we have Active Directory artifacts, we have some human mistakes, we have some legacy systems that we can tackle immediately. So they will need to make sure that the right people have access to the right data. Once that's done, we can make the connection to the business. And from that point of view, we can transfer it from IT to business. You mentioned automated processes. Can you give me some more details about that? Exactly. So we have a self-service portal called Data Privilege. So Data Privilege is a self-service portal where you will be able to log on to connect and you will see who has access to your data. We're going to use a use case. We have a finance uh, owner, finance drive. So we have a finance share drive where we store all of finance data. I'm owner of the finance drive. I'm head of finance. I will need to certify each week, each month, each quarter. You can decide which timing who has access to my data. So in the end, I'm accountable. I'm responsible to certify who has access to my finance data. And obviously, it's more than just the technical people and automated processes because you also have to get uh, management involved at fairly high levels. And off camera, we discussed data leakage as an example. Can you go into that again? Yeah, true. So if you have a data leakage, today IT will be notified. But it happens that IT sees, oh, there is a lot of sensitive data involved. Maybe we need to escalate it. And today, we are seeing that more and more boards is involved in a data leakage. They will get the facts and the figures of a data leakage. They will need to take some countermeasures. They will need to take some actions in order to avoid reputational damage, to avoid frauds, etc. 
It's important uh, how we operate is that we always do a proof of concept to really show the added value of our solutions. So basically we're going to implement our solution in the environment of the company. We will work with them on the technical challenges, we will work with them on the business challenges to show really the added value on both sides. So afterwards we have a risk assessment, kind of a POC conclusion, like what are the facts and the figures that we figured out, that we found out, where do we need to meet where do we need to mitigate the risk? What do we need to do? What are the recommendations Veronis will have in order to protect your data in your company? I know the company has a global footprint. Uh, in general terms, give me an idea what your client base is like. Exactly. So in terms of client base, we have approximately 6,500 customers uh, globally. Uh, from Gartner point of view, we have 60% of the market share. We grow about between, uh, let's say, 25 to 35% year over year. So the industries we tackle today are automotive, governmental, federal, public, healthcare, financial services, energy, oil and gas, etc. So it's important to remember that we create our own market. There is no market such as data governance or data security market. We really need to create our own market so we have a sales process adapted to that to really create the need to our prospects and to sell our own solutions. So let me summarize for you. So we automate reports, we map permissions, we manage audit trails to meet data requirements such as GDPR, ISO 27001 or 002. And when you're dealing with these GDPR issues, what's your biggest issue or challenge? So the biggest challenge we see today is, is, that, is that data is in the dark. So they have no clue about where they store the data, who has access to it, what is happening with it. It's really a complete mess or in the dark. So companies really struggle to know where do we store this data, who has access to it, and what is happening with it. Do you think now it's just too late to begin complying? I mean, what's your position? No, obviously it's not too late. I mean, there is always room for improvement, so it's we can do something about it. The steps are, as discussed, we need to map the environment, we need to prevent, we need to protect the environment, and then we can automate. So it's never too late. It's really the time to start on the GDPR projects. Obviously, we don't live in a static world. It's always changing. Just for a moment, going forward, the future, what do you see as the biggest challenges? The biggest challenge today is that we have an enormous data growth. So we all know that the data is growing exponentially. Same goes for the risks. So we have the cyber threats. They are growing at the same level, also exponentially. And we also have more and more regulations coming to us, GDPR, etc. So that will be the evolution that we will need to make to change from a perimeter security to a data security.